WordPress is a great platform, but it does come with some things we need to take into consideration. Things like updates, making sure that everything is in place. You've got security, we've got backups, all those kinds of things. This is great when you've got one or two or three websites. But once you start to get five, 10, 50, and 20, that all becomes a bit of a headache. This is where multi WordPress website management tools make life a lot easier. And that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to check out WP Remote, who have kindly sponsored this video. But as always, I'm going to give you no opinions. I'm simply going to demonstrate how the platform works so you can make a more informed decision for yourself. Let me quickly set the scene. Over the last couple of months, I've been looking at all different ways in which I can streamline my processes, not having things in different sites and different setups and connecting everything together, because while it may work now, it's too many failure points. This is where a tool like WP Remote really does make life a lot easier. So let's take a look at some of the features and why you may want to consider it yourself. So there are four key things in WP Remote that I think are very, very useful. First up, we've got WordPress backups. We need to make sure we've got multiple different backups for redundancy if something goes wrong. Let's say you've got it on your server and your server goes offline and you need to move things very quickly. Having external backups is a godsend. Then you've got WordPress security. We know that WordPress is powering over 40% of the internet, and this means it's a target for any kind of vulnerabilities. Making sure you've got additional security in place, like what we can have inside WP Remote, is going to be an advantage to help keep your site secure. It's not the only thing, but it's one piece in that arsenal of tools. Then we've got WordPress staging. When you want to make things changes to your site, you want to make sure you've got a staging site set up so you can test everything out. And when you're happy, roll that over and push it to the live site. Then we've got safe updates. And this is a great way of being able to make updates and test everything without having to log into the site and check everything on every single site. So now we've seen some of those key features. Let's just jump into the dashboard and take a look at how it works with a site that I've got set up and I've had running for several weeks. So this is the dashboard of WP Remote. Now I've got a site added inside here and this has been running for several weeks now so we can see how it all works, the various different log files and the information that we get from actual live sites. So very quickly, let's take a quick look over it. We've got our basic information about the number of sites. We can add additional sites, check out for statuses for connected, disconnected. If we're running this with clients, we can all see what client setup we've got, teams, if we want multiple people managing it as part of an agency and so on. We've also got auto updates and reports. Again, all super useful stuff. Then you've got an overview of the key areas in any or all of your sites, your plugins, your themes, your WordPress and everything. So if you want to see what plugins need to be updated on any of the sites you've got connected, they will be listed here. If I refresh, everything is already up to date on the site, so I don't have anything to update. Same thing goes for themes, WordPress or all which will show everything. So this gives you an overview of all the things you have to deal with. Then you've got your activity, which will show everything that's happened, including any errors that may have come along during the processes. So you can see I've got various different options inside you, including a plugin upgrade fail, which has been dealt with, but at least this gives me the ability to see very easily at a glance if there's something I need to address. Move on down. We've got information about the number of backups. So you can set up the duration, how long they're going to stay on there. You can set up how often the backups and so on. Security, you can see we've got one site enabled. Everything is looking good on there. Staging sites, reports. We've got the firewall connected up so we can see how much traffic has been blocked and we get an overview of uptime just in case our site has gone offline at any point and we can see when. We'd also see then we've got performance testing as well. So you can see this is giving me a load time of 1.3 seconds. So I can, at a glance, see if there's any issues slowing my site down. So all pretty simple and straightforward. Now, if you have multiple sites, you can delve into the sites themselves by simply coming over into the site section. And from there, you can choose any or all of your sites. And you'll see there's also some super useful information here. We can see the security is enabled. We can see the backups are enabled. Site is up and running. Any stage in sites, everything is up to date. We've also, we can log into the admin. We can resync. We can see the site's history. And finally, we can find out more details about the site itself. And you can see, again, that takes us back into what we saw, just giving us site-specific information now, as opposed to an overview of everything. OK, so this kind of is a bit more information now specific to the site itself. Let's say, for example, you want to create a backup. We can come into the details, first of all. And you can see we've got 63 backups here. So I've got backups from quite a way back. 
total number of files, total number of tables, real-time backup, and so on. And you can see we've got various options to migrate it, to auto-restore it, upload it to Dropbox, download it, and also to test the restore just to make sure that everything is okay. You can back up now if you want to create a manual one. So you can simply hit back up now, add any information inside here, click OK, job done. Let that run and you have an additional manual backup. So great if you want to do this before you run a Stage Insight test, for example, or you want to make an update just in case something goes wrong, you want to roll back, you can do it. And you can see this is tells us when it was synced, the file size and the frequency. So this is one backup per day. Obviously, it depends upon how busy the site is. E-commerce sites, you may want to run multiple backups per day just to make sure that if anything goes wrong, you can go back to a pretty recent backup when sales will be made and so on. You don't lose too much data. Pretty cool. Hop back out of this. You can see we can add any notes, stage in our security. We could review our security from here. So this will take us over and we can see the site is clean, when it was scanned, the firewall, any monitoring, exactly what's going on there. Pretty cool. Again, lots of useful information for us. Let's say now we want to create a stage insight. Again, it's incredibly simple. Add a stage insight. You can say the backup version we want to use, the PHP version, we'll click continue. That will then go and create our stage insight for us, give us a breakdown of what's going on. And then we can log into that stage insight, run any kind of updates, changes, add new software, whatever we kind of want to do to make sure that everything is working before we push that back to the live site. And there we go. You can see after a few moments, everything is set up. Now I can visit the stage insight or I can pop into the admin section. It's all there for us. We can then carry on working the way we want. Heading back to our dashboard, you can see now this shows us we've got our stage insight, how long it's going to be active for before it automatically removes itself. And you can, if you want to, jump in and take a look at your details, go straight into the admin, or you can merge this through to the actual live site itself. And if we take a look, all the information underneath, tell us about the files, the sync, tables, size. We can manage all those synchronizations if we want to. Check our performance out. If we've got Google Analytics, we can connect that up here. I don't use Google Analytics, but if you want to, you can connect it. More information about the uptime monitoring. And again, we can come in and we can open up the advanced monitoring information. We can find out this is monitoring for our SSL certificate. So if that expires and we don't realize it's expired, we'll have it notified inside you. We'll get an email letting us know. You're going to get the idea. We can add in additional monitors. We can add page content monitors that'll check against keywords or phrases. There's so much you can kind of do inside you that it's a very, you can keep it as simple as you want, or you can get into some real detail. And like I say, if you've got lots of sites, this is where a platform like this just makes life a lot easier to get up and running and main, maintain everything, monitor everything, keep an eye on uptime, any issues that come up, check for SSL certificate expirations, all those kinds of things are available to you, the stage insights and so on. Now, if you work with clients, you could also set up reporting for them. You may have a maintenance plan in place and every single week or every single month, you wanna send them information about how much uptime, any issues, any performance issues, all those kinds of things, or just give them an update to exactly what you've been doing. So if you need to justify what you do as part of your maintenance package, this is something that can make it super easy just by creating a new report and then scheduling it gets sent out to your various different clients. Again, it's super easy. You can hop in, you can import a CSV file, add custom work, or you can keep it really simple and just say a new report. And you can see this will then create the cover page, the overview, and all the information that you need pulled in from the statistics and the information that we've seen for your security, your updates, all those kinds of things. You can create your report, and after a few moments, you can see there's our report. We can download this, we can forward it, or we can schedule it and have it set up to automatically go out for us. We don't need to even handle this. It can all be done in the background for us. And if we take a quick look at the report, the information is contained inside there. You can see this is a website report, what website it relates to. You can also see the date that it refers to. Scroll on through, there's our information about our report, the number of backups and so on, the firewall information. You kind of get the idea, this is super useful, like I say, if you are sending information over to clients, just to let them know exactly what you've been doing on their website. Now, if you want to delve into the nitty gritty, you can simply come up to any of the sites you want, hit the settings icon, and inside there, you can see we can password protect things, we can set up the server IP, the sync time, we can update the URL if we make changes to it, any tags, we can control whether auto updates are going to be handled inside WordPress itself. And again, we can do these kinds of things remotely, which is pretty cool. Database upgrades, you can see we can change there. If we want to add in Google Analytics, 
we can do it all here. So there's tons of options. So you can keep this as simple as you want or as complex as you want, whether it's just for you or whether you're using this as part of your agency to send information over in those reports over to clients. Now, one of the things I really do like, depending upon the plan that you have, is the visual regression testing. Now, that's a really fancy way of basically saying when you update a theme or a plugin or so on, WordPress core, it will do a test between the two and it will see are there any visual differences in which case there may be a problem between an update and the site prior to the update. Let me show you what I'm talking about. You can see that we've got an update here for custom post type UI. Let's go and action that now to update. So now you can see it tells us we've got one plugin. Let's open this down. You can see it tells us which site it's actually related to. So you may have multiple sites connected and it will show you which sites have that particular plugin that need an update. Let's go to the next step. And now we can do a quick update, which will just push it over and update it and throw caution to the wind. Or we can do a safe update. Now, safe update is where we do the visual regression. Again, let me show you. We'll choose that option. We'll click on update. So this will now do the visual regression test, which basically means it takes a look at the before and various different parts of that. And then it'll do the update and show us after. And if there's any variance between the two, we'll be able to see it. It'll pull it up and flag it. And then what we can do is we can use a restore point to go back to where it was prior to the update. And then we can make sure that we do everything we need on a stage inside or whatever. It's quite a cool way of doing it. It's not the be all and end all, but it is super useful. There we go. After a few moments, you can see now it's gone through all the things it's done, fetching the latest info, upgrading the plugin, fetching the latest info again, comparing the screenshots and so on, testing JavaScript errors, purging the cache and so on. So you can see this tells us now the before and the after are a perfect match. You can even click on these and take a look at what it looked like previously, afterwards, and if there's any differences at all, this will then show you what those differences actually are. Now, obviously, there's no difference here in our example, but it's pretty cool. Like I say, it's one of those extra little features, depending upon the plan that you have, that can make updating and dealing with the plugin updates and so on just a little bit less painful. So now we've seen some of the key features that we've got in WP Remote. Let's take a quick look at the pricing structure. Now, as always, this is at the time of recording this. This may change when you watch it, so take this with a grain of salt. So the pricing comes down to you can choose between monthly and yearly. You'll save a little bit of cash if you go for yearly. You save about two months worth. You can also set up the number of sites you want between five and 100 sites. But let's go back to monthly a second. So you've got three different plans, your basic, your plus, and your pro. And the key differences between the plus and the pro are the number of some of the resources. For example, you've got the same number of sites included, but the active sites or the backups, they will change and increase when you go up to the pro license. The basic is probably more than enough for a lot of users and allows you to get started and see how it all works. Again, gives you five sites, two staging sites, but some of the extra things like activity logs, visual regression testing, and so on are not included in this. So bear that in mind. Take a look at what you need and then factor that in accordingly. But also, just like I say, bear in mind that if you are doing this for a client and you have a maintenance package, this basically works out about $10 per month per site. If you have a maintenance package, the time that this can save you can easily offset any cost that may be involved. So again, it's worth bearing that in mind when you look at tools like this. How much time can they save you? So that's the basics of WP Remote. Hopefully this has given you an insight into what this can do and if it can help streamline your whole process of dealing with multiple WordPress websites. As always, all applicable links are in the description down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.